Ahmed Saeed is a prominent Egyptian businessman and political leader. He's one of the founders of a new political party in post-Mubarak Egypt called the Free Egyptian Party. Egypt is scheduled to hold parliamentary elections sometimes this fall. Mr. Saeed joins us now from Cairo, Egypt. Welcome, sir. Hello, how are you? Egypt is going through a tumultuous time as the country tries to adapt to life after President Mubarak, the aftermath of the protests and preparations for parliamentary elections. As an Egyptian, could you describe the popular mood in Egypt right now? Well, the popular mood is uh, a bit shaky and confusing at the, at the moment. Uh, as, you, as you've just described, the uh, revolutions, uh, we had the revolution last February, January and February. And since then, uh, there have been a lot of confusion in the Egyptian political uh, arena where there is a complete split right now between the advocators of the civil community in Egypt and those who are uh, calling for an Islamic state. So this is exactly what's going on right now in Egypt. Is the population mostly anticipating more improvements in their lives or are they disappointed with the pace of change? I think that the population is uh, very disappointed with the pace of change because uh, after Mubarak was deposed in last January, everybody was expecting quick steps. But unfortunately, the government is moving in a very slow pace. Can you tell us why the political party you have joined was formed and what its goals are? Well, you know, after the revolution and uh, before the revolution, actually, there was only uh, one major party that is the ruling party called the National Democratic Party that was completely dismantled after the revolution or during the revolution. And it was a normal, uh, it was a normal reaction for uh, most of the people who did not actually exercise politics before the revolution to start forming parties. And we have a lot of parties that had been formed, about 12 parties that have been formed after the revolution. And we are one of them. I think it was normal, a normal step for all Egyptians to start uni getting uh, uh, unified un uh, under different political parties. What are the chances of that new party in the upcoming parliamentary elections? Well, this is a very good question because the chances of the new parties in general are very slim at the moment. And this is part of the confusion and the struggle that is going on in the, politi in the Egyptian political uh, scene right now. Because you cannot ask a party that was just formed uh, a couple of months ago to uh, indulge in an election that will shape the Egyptian political life for the next 30 years. So people are afraid that because the only faction who is prepared right now are the Muslim brothers, that if they lead, if they take part in this elections, then they, they, if they win majority, it will be very difficult to change the scene again. So we are asking right now for some sort of a delay or postponement of the next elections, which is scheduled on the 15th of uh, November. There are many reports that Islamist groups, notably the Muslim Brotherhood, are poised to take 50% or more of the seats in Parliament in the fall elections. Do you believe this is the case? I believe this could be the case if the elections are held next November, because uh, they are not the only political faction uh, in Egypt. Uh, unfortunately, the absolute majority of the people who belong to our faction, who believe in a civilized country based on science and a country based on the civil community, uh, these, the absolute majority are uh, still passive and it is our duty now to get them into the street and to get them join the political life. On the contrary, the people who uh, belong to the Islamic groups that have been organized since 1928 are always on the move and have always been in the streets and the absolute majority are active. So this is exactly the situation right now where we need some time in order to reach the people. Are you concerned about possible efforts by the Muslim Brotherhood and similar groups to move Egypt toward a theocracy? We are very concerned about that, yes, because there are a lot of calls now for uh, th these factions are asking to completely ignore the fact that we have a constitution, to draft a new constitution, and they want us, uh, and they are calling now seriously for the application of the Sharia, which is the Islamic law. There are some reports that the Muslim Brotherhood have close ties to the military rulers. Is there any truth to this? No, I don't think this is true at all. As a matter of fact, the military rulers have announced several times that the civil Egypt is a matter of national security, so they are very clear on that. But the problem is that the Islamic factions are threatening if uh, anything that, goes, uh, that, is not, uh, that is not going on their way and if this time schedule, they oppose the time schedule, they are threatening to go in the streets and have uh, big demonstrations.
Is the Egyptian military taking steps to limit the influence of Islamist parties? No, I don't think they are taking any steps to limit the influence of any political faction. As a matter of fact, after the revolution, people are free to express themselves. And uh, if you follow the Egyptian scene right now, there are demonstrations every Friday at the Tahrir Square where everyone can really express himself. And I don't think they are taking any measures to stop any political faction from growing or anything like that. Uh, do you believe the repressive Mubarak regime has been replaced by an interim military government made up of Mubarak appointees that has made few, if any, reforms, especially civil rights reforms? No, I, I don't believe so. I think that, as you put it very correctly at the beginning of the interview, that the pace of change is slow. But I don't think that there is any replacement by the Mubarak regime. People are, the Egyptian people will not accept the Mubarak regime or any remnants of the Mubarak regime anymore. We've been seeing reports that there is rising anti-Israel tide growing in Egypt since the downfall of Mubarak and that this tide led to mobs overrunning Israel's embassy to Egypt on September 9th. Do you believe this is the case? And if so, what are the causes? No, there, there haven't been any anti-Israeli sentiments during the revolution. But the episode that took place on the borders a couple of weeks ago or maybe 10 days ago when some Egyptian, when some Egyptian soldiers were, sh were shot uh, at the borders. That is the thing that really fired the thing out. But if you take into consideration that since the 25th of January until 10 days ago, there was nothing against Israel and the people were not talking at all about any sort of uh, relation uh, uh, of the peace uh, treaty with Israel. There was no mention of this at all. What happened is that uh, some Egyptian soldiers were killed during uh, so, uh, some fights at the borders. And since then, there have been some uh, claims by the public in order to withdraw the Egyptian uh, uh, ambassador. And we, here we have to differentiate between what happened regarding the demonstrations that took place, asking the government that was a bit shaky and hesitant to withdraw the ambassador. Uh, and I think this is the right of the people, just as Turkey said, and between the violence that took place attacking the Israeli embassy, which is condemned by all Egyptians, even all political parties, and even the Muslim Brotherhood have uh, condemned such attacks because we are supposed to protect any diplomatic mission in Egypt. The Christian Copts, one of the most ancient Christian communities, also says they are under attack. Columnist Doug Bandel writes this, Christians had been killed, more than 200 had been injured, and three churches had been destroyed. Muslim mobs, well-armed thugs, have also attacked Christians who are protesting against earlier attacks. Few perpetrators have been arrested, let alone punished. Mr. Saeed, is this an accurate assessment, and what can be done to fix this? No, this is not a correct assessment at all. Uh, there have always been some turbulence between uh, Muslims and Christians over the past 50 years, and uh, there is nothing new actually in the political scene right now. There were some turbulence also after the revolution, but I think it's coming to an end right now. We've not seen any struggle between Muslims and Christians. And I really don't want to take the story now to discuss something like this because uh, Muslims and Copts are living peacefully right now. They are afraid. Uh, as a matter of fact, uh, they have one unified stand with respect to the civil uh, uh, civil uh, community that we are looking for and a lot of Muslims are against the application of Sharia and standing side by side by their uh, Coptic brothers. All right, last question, sir. Egypt has improved its relations with Hamas and brokered a Hamas Fatah unity deal that the U.S. opposed. It allowed Iranian warships to cross the Suez Canal. There has been strong anti-American sentiments expressed lately in the Egyptian press, including an allegation that the U.S. ambassador is a CIA spy. Is a post-Mubarak Egypt likely to be hostile to the United States? I don't think so at all. I mean, the, the United States have been uh, attacked since the Mubarak regime, and I think that the Americans have been claiming that there are anti-American sentiments since 9-11. Uh, since uh, we all know that. And uh, actually, the Americans are not anymore in touch with the Egyptian people. The, um, I have always been describing the American community in Egypt to have isolated themselves completely from the street. But the United States is a country that is very well respected. People look up to the Americans. People are dreaming of the American dream. And I don't think that it, there are any anti-American sentiments. You have to come to Egypt to see for yourself, because uh, unfortunately, with all the media that is going on right now, the American people feel that there are anti-American uh, sentiments. And if there are any, it is because of the 
blind support to Israel, regardless if they are making a mistake or not. Ahmed Saeed, thank you so much. We appreciate it, sir. Thank you, sir. And thank you for watching Newsmax TV.